Okay, so uh, still on the subject of mutations, uh, this video is going to look at uh, chromosome mutations. So again, this is changing uh, the DNA that is in a cell, it's changing the um, composition, the amount of DNA if you like. So, uh, chromosome mutations come in sort of two forms. There's kind of the break it, break a bit off one chromosome and attach it to another, which we're not uh, isn't on your syllabus, so we're not going to deal with that. Um, and there's also this one that's caused by what's called non-disjunction. So, what does that term mean? Non-disjunction. You imagine what normally happens in meiosis. We've got our homologous pairs. I'll just draw two. One of them heads off that way with the other one and the other one heads off the other way till they reach the poles. And what you would get is that meiosis one. You get one long and one short. And then of course the chromatids are going to split off. So what it's saying is that instead of going that way, one of these goes that way with its partner. So what we end up with is, so this is if we've got non-disjunction, we end up with two chromosomes and one in that cell and none in the other cell, except for the little one. So gain or loss of one chromosome, there's only one chromosome involved. Well, we call it aneuploidy. I've got to say that plants are very fond of doing polyploidy where they sort of, you know, they barely bother to separate anything and they end up with triploid uh, cells or even quadruploid cells. But in humans we're just dealing with one example which is aneuploidy, which is one chromosome. Now obviously if that gets fertilised, so we're going to cross this with another cell, that's going to have its normal complement of chromosomes. So what you end up in the zygote is you would get a cell with three copies of one chromosome and two of the other. That, having three copies, trisomy. If we fertilise this cell, what we're going to end up with is one copy and our two little ones. So the one that's on your syllabus is this one and if we get trisomy of chromosome 21 this is leads to a syndrome called Down syndrome after I'm guessing the guy who first thought of giving it a name. <coughs> so this has the usual um, effects on the phenotype. Um, the uh, what's called a mongol fold in the eye, which of course people in Far East Asia also have. Well, it's called a mongol fold after the mongol tribes. Um, generally uh, heart associated with heart conditions, uh, perhaps learning difficulties, although I was absolutely blown away when I saw that um, lady off the telly going to, she went to Finland where they've now got 100% um, abortion rate for uh, children diagnosed with Down syndrome prenatally. And she was talking to a girl who spoke two different languages and this and that and the other and just um, so presumably not always. 
um, slightly larger tongues, uh, which sort of make the tongues stick out between their lips sometimes when they're speaking. Um, there's a little fold on the palm of the hand, which are all signs of Down syndrome. <coughs> but it is a syndrome, so it's affecting a lot of different systems. It's not affecting a lot of different phenotypes and also it's affecting them in different ways. So you've got sort of really people who are quite severely affected by these things and people who are not so severely. So it's also a bit of a spectrum. Um, however, you're just interested in the biology and therefore uh, you're interested in why it happens, trisomy and uh, which chromosome number it affects, trisomy of chromosome 21.